Welcome back. Today we're looking at section 7.4 on arc length. And we have a nice little uh, derivation on where the formula comes from. Uh, if you kind of understand how something works, uh, it tends to go into your long-term memory versus just your short-term memory. So the idea here is if I want the length of this curve, I can start by just cutting it up into little segments. So we'll start at x equals a, we'll end at, oh, let's say x equals b. And we'll cut it into little sections and connect line segments. And I'll just show you what the first few you can kind of continue mentally from there. So we'll call this guy x sub 2. We'll call this guy x sub 3, x sub 4, and so on. So x sub n is going to be our b. x sub n minus 1 be our second to last line segment. So we can simply use a bunch of little Pythagorean theorems on all of these. If I want the distance between any two of the points, that's a hypotenuse. The leg would be x sub i plus 1 minus x sub i, and we would square it. So for example, x3 minus x2 squared. And our distance vertically, just the change in the y. y sub i plus 1 minus y sub i. And again, Pythagorean theorem, we're squaring it. So in our distance, square root of x sub i plus 1 minus x sub i squared plus y sub i plus 1 minus y sub i squared. So this is really just change in x, this is really just change in y. So we'll make a little simpler. So distance delta x squared and subinterval i delta y subinterval i also squared. The next part uh, is a, uh, a little bit creative. Uh, we're going to multiply by 1, just kind of in an unusual way. So I'm going to hang on to this x sub i, delta x sub i squared, and I'm going to both multiply and divide by the same thing, and it's multiplying by 1. So I I'll put a delta x sub i downstairs. So I've multiplied the bottom by delta x sub i squared. I'll also have to do the same with the top. Now I can do a couple things with this. One, it's in both of these. I can factor it. That turns this first term just into a nice, neat, pretty one. And my second term, we factored this guy, so we have our delta y sub i over delta x sub i squared. Okay, square root of delta x squared, delta x. Uh, we don't really need the absolute value that we usually would since uh, delta is a distance. Distance is assumed to be not negative. Change in y over change in x. You calculus fan should know that sounds like a, an awful lot like a rate of change, a derivative. It sure is. So then our distance, square root of 1 plus f prime 
squared. That's a lovely f there. 1 plus f prime squared, uh, delta x. We can also call that dx. So then if we let s be the sum of all distances, So each one of these, and we let n approach infinity, draw more and more small line segments. Then s will be integral from a to b of square root of 1 plus f prime of x squared times dx. So this is our arc length formula if we know the function and we have a differentiable function. So we'll start with one that we know. We'll start with just a line. y equals 5x plus 1 and we'll say x is on the closed interval 0, 3. So we can make a quick dirty sketch of that in uh, just our xy plane and use the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, so let's see, so again, this is not going to be to scale, just quick rough sketch. Uh, so here we are at when x is 0, y is 1, and when x is 3, y is 16. So if I sketch in a nice little right triangle there, from 0 to 3 is 3 units, from 1 to 16 is 15 units. So distance is square root of 9 plus 225. So our distance, square root of 234, and that has a 9 is a factor, yeah. 5 and 4 is 9, yeah, 9 is a factor. Uh, so I go in there twice. 54 would be 6. So distance would be 3 root 26. All right, so we know the distance of this using just the Pythagorean theorem method. Uh, nice thing about Pythagorean theorem, as you can see, pretty straightforward to use. Uh, doesn't work with curves. So let's practice with the arc length formula. So S is the integral from A to B of the square root of 1 plus F prime of X squared times DX. So our arc length for this guy, integral from given 0 to 3 square root of 1 plus, so f of x was our 5x plus 1, so f prime of x is just a nice neat pretty 5. So f prime squared would be 5 squared, and we multiply by dx, so s is integral from 0 to 3 of root 26 times dx. Antiderivative of a constant is the first power, so s is equal to root 26x evaluated from 0 to 3, which is 3 root 26. So we do get the same arc length. So with a line, no problem. Uh, the Arian theorem is possible. Arc length does indeed give us the same result. Uh, where this arc length formula really comes into its own is when we do a curve when we don't have the option to do a nice neat pretty Pythagorean one. So we're going to find the arc length of y is two-thirds by x squared plus one quantity raised to the three-halves on the closed interval zero one. x is on that closed interval. Uh, so one of the things we're going to need is a derivative, so y prime 
2 thirds by 3 halves by x squared plus 1 to the 3 halves minus 1. 3 halves minus 2 halves is 1 half. And don't forget your u prime, so times 2x. So if you need a little review on that, uh, review your chain rule. That one, you could even look at general power rule. So again, if, if that uh, went a little too fast for you, that's where you can do a little review. So y prime, uh, do a little clean up here, 2x uh, by x squared plus 1 to the half. So our arc length, integral from a to b, of the square root of 1 plus f prime of x squared times dx. So our arc length here, integral from 0 to 1, square root of 1 plus f prime of x this time is an expression 2x square root of x squared plus 1 squared times dx. So our arc length, we've got a little cleanup to do before we do our antiderivative 1 plus all right, two factors there, so 2x quantity squared, 4x squared, square and square root will cancel, x squared plus 1, hang on to your dx. So arc length integral 0 to 1, square root of 1 plus 4x to the fourth plus 4x squared times dx. And this we can do a little bit of factoring if it helps you to reorder it before you factor, go ahead and do so. So our arc length then, integral from 0 to 1 of square root of, notice this is 2x squared plus 1 squared times dx. So our arc length is 2x, integral of 2, uh, 2x squared plus 1 times dx. So the square and square root again, inverse operations. So our arc length, x squared, now just the power rule, becomes x cubed. Add a 2 out there, want to cancel the 3, so 2 thirds x cubed. Integral of 1 is 1x, and we're looking from 0 to 1. So our arc length here is 5 thirds. So this is our so our units on that are in uh, just whatever the original unit, since we're talking a length, uh, length would be in inches or feet or yards or meters, whatever the original measurement was, as opposed to the volume where we had cubic units or area where we have square units. Okay, occasionally we do need a little bit of substitution. Uh, I'm just going to put dot, 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 find the arc length. So the same instructions as last time. Find the arc length. Y equals 4x to the 3 halves plus 7. X is on the closed interval 0, 8. So we'll need a derivative. So 4 times 3 halves times x to the 1 half. So that is 6x one half. So in our arc length, integral from 0 to 8 now, uh, square root of 1 plus f prime squared, so 6x to the 1 half squared times dx. So our arc length then, integral from 0 to 8, the square root of 1 plus 36x times dx. Okay, so direct integration, a little bit messy on this one, so we can do a little u substitution. If we let u equal 36x plus 1, then du is 36 times dx. Um, I see a dx already. I don't see a 36, so we'll multiply by 1 again. 
36 that we need inside, which means a 136 outside, multiply by one. So S is the integral from, we'll temporarily call it A to B since these were in, written in terms of X and we're now gonna be writing in terms of U. So square root of one plus 36 X turns into U to the one half power, 36 times DX is DU. So our arc length is u to the 3 halves, which means we need a 2 thirds there. Evaluate it from a to b, we'll plug our original back in, so 2 thirds u we said is the same as 36x plus 1, and we're evaluating on 0, 8. And raised to the 3 s power. So plug it and chug in from there, we end up at two thousand four hundred fifty six twenty sevenths. And remember your one thirty six, that way that number will actually make some sense there. All right. So one more arc length, and then we'll get into some area problems.